what's going on everybody welcome back to another video uh today we're doing so we're on top of a meat holding cooler uh, where we have two coils we got one coil over here one coil over here so the issue we're having with this one is so this is glycol um, underneath here i'll we'll expose it here in a second but there's an automatic flow valve is what it's called um, so it's a per it's a fixed flow rate for glycol and um, unfortunately we were given the wrong size valve the wrong gpm um, so i think this one right now is a 3.7 gpm it's supposed to be a seven uh, and then we were able to get just a rebuild kit for it so you can see on there this one is seven gpm right so instead of having to change the whole valve this thing has a basically a union which you'll see in a sec um, that will disconnect and then put this rebuild kit in and then turn it on and hopefully it comes down to temp uh, but we got to take this insulation off and then we'll get into it all right so got the insulation off like you can see this is just a brass valve and then it's got this union on here um, we'll have to melt this ice real quick and then this one is actually a 3.0 i don't know if y'all can see that but it's 3.0 in there um, so like i said we're changing it out for a seven so what we've done first it's turned off the supply line. The idea is to kind of pump it down. It doesn't really pump down like a traditional refrigeration system, but there is higher pressure here than there is here. Um, so now that we've had it pumped down for a little bit, we're gonna go ahead, close that return line, um, and then melt this ice off, and then we'll crack this union and start changing that thing out. Not too close. Just enough to melt the ice, not the valve. All right, so we got that ice melted off. What we're doing now is we're gonna open up that union. Um, we have these pipe wrenches on here because they don't really give you a spot, like another flat spot. Go ahead. Another flat spot to put like a, another channel lock or crescent wrench or anything. Um, and then we have this bucket underneath um, because, so basically, we, right, we have these lines closed off. So what we're gonna do is crack that union and then bleed off the glycol into this bucket. And these things I've taken apart, uh, two of them in the past, and they are pretty fucking difficult to do. So you definitely gotta put some man behind it. Thankfully, I have my uh, my helper with me today, so he's able to do this one. We might have to put a man on that, on that wrench though. We'll see. All right, so we got that thing loosened up. Actually, I got you on that. Give me a second, give me a second. All right. Got that thing loosened up. I can't really get a good angle on it, but. So now we're just gonna loosen her up slowly just to release that glycol pressure, right? So we're just bleeding that glycol right into this bucket. Shouldn't be very much since the system's not running. Basically, we're just getting rid of the pressure that's in the lines, um, but the, re the remaining of the line should stay filled with glycol. All right, so with these little kits, these little cartridge change out kits, um, they basically just come with this little crush ring, and then this is what's uh, regulating your glycol. So I asked Manuel, he said that it's called a diaphragm, right? So this is your diaphragm, and your diaphragm has this little orange dot on it. What that indicates is the direction of flow. So the direction of flow is gonna be away from that orange dot. So if we're looking at that arrow as direction of flow, our orange dot will go along with the direction of flow. Um, and then you have your or or your orfish, right? Which is this plastic piece right here, and Basically what happens is this little, your diaphragm sits inside of your orifice like so. And then you can see the gap in between there is what lets that glycol through, right? So it's regulating that glycol. And then you just have these two um, rubber O-rings that go inside just to seal everything. But other than that, it's pretty simple. All right, make sure you don't drop anything as it comes out. See, there's the old diaphragm and orifice. Orange is pointing into the orifice, and then you should have that crush washer in there as well. Okay. All right, and then just swap her out, baby. Fred. Oh, no, the it's still in there. It's fine. We got new O-rings. Oh, we got new O-rings. So lubricated with a little glycol. Get her nice and wet. The big O-ring goes on the other side. Yeah. Oh, over here, right? Yep. 
Okay, small one goes in the orifice. Lube her up. Nope, 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 goes on the face. Right here? Yep. Like that? Yep, just like that. Okay, and then that crush ring, the bent pit, the bent part goes towards the valve. Yep, just like that. Slide that bad girl in there. Finger. It's stuck. You All got right. it. I believe in you. Thanks, dude. Okay. Orange part goes into nope. Other way. That? Yep, orange part goes into your orifice. It wasn't like that, right? And then, yep, and then that slides back into the valve against that crush washer. Okay. Don't worry about the O-rings necessarily until you get it all in. So one thing I've noticed with doing these is that that rubber, so your... Um, diaphragm? What's that thing called again? Diaphragm. Diaphragm. Your rubber diaphragm, yeah. So these rubber diaphragms don't like to sit inside that orifice very well so you got to kind of got to monkey around with it a little bit until you get it to all slide back in there there you go so you can see that orange tip right there now that we got all that in there we'll just thread this thing back together make sure it's straight not cross threading All right, and then before we fully tighten it, we're gonna leave, we got this left a little bit cracked. So we're just gonna purge the air out. We're gonna open our supply line a little bit. Uh, gonna have to loosen it a little bit more. All right, you can see we got it coming out. And then open our return line a little bit. Blow it out from both sides. And then we'll tighten that thing completely. All right, we got it tight. And then last thing we're gonna do before we completely open it up is we're gonna open this supply line and we're going to check for leaks we're just making sure it's not dripping off the bottom of that valve which there is a little drip take a little rag wipe it off because we did just kind of purge that thing with glycol so we'll get this thing nice and dry and then check for any drips all right not seeing any drips we've been watching it for a second um, so we're done with that. We're, we still have this supply lined open. Now we'll just open the return. And then the last and most important step is we're gonna take this little tag right here and we're gonna put it on the valve. I'm actually gonna put it over here, over top. Even though I don't like the position of that tag, I'm gonna put it over top. That way there's no confusion about um, which one it is. And real quick, just a little behind the scenes look of what actually happens to make a final product. <laughs> What all the scrubs of refrigeration <laughs> yeah. spend their time doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah, it's okay. You just keep doing stuff. I'm just kidding, insulation guys. We love you. Oh, you all right, and there's the final product. All glued back together, looking all sharp, except for that spot in the middle. It's yeah, a little wet, so it'll take a second. All right, and then the last thing I want to do is make sure that our pressures are still good um, on our skid. So I'll come up to my line for C skid, which is what we were working on. All right, open that up and then I'm looking at this gauge. So when I started this up, which we're good, so I put, so at, at running pressure, I wanted it at 50 pounds. And then when I was filling it, once it got to this line, I knew that I was at that 50 pounds. So we're still perfect, we're good. Um, so this job is complete. So yeah, we're just gonna let that thing sit. We're gonna let it run, see how it looks in the morning. We'll be back in the morning. Um, as always, I appreciate everybody watching. Make sure you uh, like, subscribe, share, and we'll catch you on the next one. Have a good one, later.